Good evening. Since 5 p.m., the board has been in closed session for the discussion of minutes lawfully closed under the Open Meetings Act, whether for purpose of school board approval of the minutes or semi-annual review of the minutes as mandated by act. Pers um, the appointment, employment, compensation, discipline, performance, or dismissal of specific employees or legal counsel, including hearing testimony on a complaint lodged against an employee or legal counsel to determine its validity. Litigation when an action against, affecting, or on behalf of the school board has been filed and is pending before a court or administrative tribunal, or when the school board finds an action is probable or imminent, in which case the basis for the finding shall be recorded and entered into the minutes of the closed meeting, and collective negotiating matters between the school board and its employees or their representatives, or deliberations concerning salary schedules for one or more classes of employees. I will take a motion to come out of closed session. So moved. Second. A motion has second and been heard. Please call the roll, Mrs. Patton. McMillan. Aye. Fitzgerald. Aye. Wonke. Aye. Gerke. Aye. Cush. Aye. Kosminski. Aye. Kelly Black. Aye. The motion passes. We are in open session. Welcome to our March 18th meeting. Our mission is to educate students to be self-directed learners, collaborative workers, complex thinkers, quality producers, and community contributors. Please call the roll, Mrs. Patton. Board members present this evening, Christine Gerke, Kristen Fitzgerald, Charles Cush, Melissa Kelly Black, Joe Kosminski, Amanda McMillan, and Donna Wanke. Student ambassadors present, Kim Abara and Javier Sevilla. Next, please join our friends from Elm Elmwood Elementary as they lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. Good evening, my name is Matt Langis. I am the principal at Elmwood Elementary School and we are very excited to be here for the Pledge of Allegiance. Um, I'm gonna have this group introduce themselves. This is a group of our fifth grade students. Um, I reached out to our staff and asked to select students who really represent our message of SOAR, which stands for Safety, Ownership, Acceptance, and Respect. And these students' names were selected by their teachers um, for going always consistently above and beyond in those areas and really being leaders in our school. So I'm going to have them introduce themselves now, and then we'll start the pledge. Hi, my name is Maria. Hi, my name is Marshall. My name is Calista in Mr. Miller's class. My name is Declan in Mr. Moe's class. My name is Everett in Ms. Park's class. My name is Melia, and I am from Mrs. Park's class. My name is Will, and I'm in Ms. Stein's class. My name is Crew, and I'm in Ms. Stein's class. Which class are you all in? There we go. All right, so please join us as we face the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Um, we're, we're also a dual language school, um, so we do the Pledge of Allegiance in Spanish every day as well. So if you don't mind, we'd like to do that also. I use my teachers. My teachers. Fantastic. Great job. Awesome. So you're going to stay right there if you don't mind, Pledge Kids. Ms. Willard is going to take a picture for us, I believe, uh, for the district. Uh, as soon as Mrs. Willard completes this, if there are any uh, parents or family members or other friends that are here uh, with any of these folks and you want to come up for a better picture, you're welcome to come up into the air where Mrs. Willard is to take that picture. Okay, stay right there. Anybody, parents, anybody that would like to come closer for a picture? This is their opportunity to experience paparazzi. <laughs> oh. 
Stay still. Anybody else? We all set? Let's thank our friends from Illinois. Thank you, Mr. Langus. transition now to the point of our agenda where we share some good news. We do have a couple of good news items to share with the community this evening. Um, first, last week we received a very special thank you from a local soldier who has been deployed for over nine months serving in the Middle East. He came across a banner created this past Veterans Day by Ranchview Elementary students. He was visiting a USO facility and was surprised to see the Naperville name which lovingly reminded him of home. Thank you for taking time to create this beautiful flag in recognition of our veterans. It really does make a difference in the life of a soldier. Thank you, Ranch View. <laughs> and all of our other schools have prepared those uh, banners and things to support our veterans around Veterans Day. Okay, at the March 1st County Institute Day, retiring learning support coach Chris Roy was recognized for her nearly 36 years of dedication to Neighborville 203 and her work alongside her family with the Janine Nicarico Memorial Literacy Fund. The Janine Nicarico Memorial Literacy Fund had provided grants and scholarships to promote literacy in our community in honor of their sister Janine, who at the age of 10 was abducted and murdered in 1983. Thank you for supporting our students. Thank you so much to the Roy family. Um, a little recognition now, please. I would like to, if they're here, I haven't even looked up yet, David Carroll, Connie Cremens, uh, Dave Davis, Betty Cannell, and Janet Parker. Are you here, any of you? I'm, I'm here representing all of those. Then you're going to help me with the distribution of certificates to our newest um, National Board Certified Educator. There. Okay, congratulations to the 2023 National Board Certified Teachers. The National Board for Professional Teaching Standards is one of the most prestigious uh, credentials a teacher can earn. Those who achieve the status of National Board Certified Teacher have met rigorous standards through intensive study, expert evaluation, self-assessment, and peer review. To date, more than 90 teachers, that's still about right, okay, who are currently employed in District 203 have earned a national board certification. They join 82,000 teachers throughout the country who have achieved this mark of excellence. Um, and so I thank Mr. Dr. Carroll uh, and the others that I mentioned who have helped lead and facilitate this process through our Career 203 process. So as our new uh, national board certified teachers are named, if you'd come forward, uh, accept your certificate and pin from Dr. Carroll. Uh, and then what we're gonna have you do, maybe, um, Dr. Knowlton, if you can help direct them around. We're going to take a nice picture of them. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, Andreas, uh, Damien, Damienides. <laughs> uh, Christine Day. And Joanna Laperna. <laughs> Dr. Carroll, if you'd join them. Um, and just because they're older kids doesn't mean we can't recognize them or suggest that there's any family, friends, or whatnot that are here would like a better picture. You are welcome to come forward and take that picture. Congratulations. Um, very impressive the work that you've put in. Well done. Thank you for your commitment to the highest professional standards. Much appreciated. Okay, I'd like to invite uh, Mr. Keith Carlson to come up here and join me. I don't know if you knew you were going to do this, but surprise, all right. 
Uh, Keith is the sponsor of uh, Central Chimes at Naperville Central High School. Uh, and this evening, I'm going to let Principal Thornton stay in her seat because you're here as a mom tonight. Okay? I don't mean to call this out too much. Um, but congratulations to Naperville Central senior Jake Pfeiffer, the 2024 Illinois Journalist of the Year, recognized by the Illinois Journalism Education Association. Congratulations. Come forward for a little acknowledgement. I invite Mr. Carlson a few words or something about this recognition. It's been a long time since we've had somebody recognized for this. Please. Right. So Jake becomes the second. I don't know where I'm supposed to look. I'm rotating. Uh, becomes the second uh, District 203 student, uh, both from Naperville Central, the first since 1991 to be named the Illinois High School Journalist of the Year. And uh, for the sake of transparency, I actually serve as the president of the uh, Illinois Journalism Education Association, so I had to recuse myself from the voting process this year because I had uh, we had a strong candidate, um, which obviously worked out well. But uh, each state has a winner that goes on to a national competition that includes a, a scholarship uh, and uh, national recognition through the National Scholastic Press Association and the Journalism Education Association. So Jake's portfolio, online portfolio, which can be found on the IJEA website for anybody who wants to look at it, um, showcases his vision as an editorial leader and his hard work in a variety of different areas of journalism over his high school career. And uh, he will be uh, competing right now. They're, they're evaluating all the different state portfolios to recognize a winner. So I'm really proud of Jake, uh, his work leading the Central Times, uh, not just this year as editor in chief, but over the past couple of years as a student leader. And uh, congratulations to his mom, Jackie, um, and really thankful for her support as well. Uh, I think that's it. Thanks. Anything you want to say? How about you? Anything you want to say? Yeah, do it, for sure. All right, let's have you and uh, Mr. Carlson go around to the Naval 203 sign, take a picture. Um, and yes, thank you, Principal Thornton. Please join them. I'm wondering if maybe we should pepper Mr. Pfeiffer with a whole bunch of questions like we're in an impromptu press conference or something like that. Put you on the other side. Congratulations, Jake. We're all very proud of you. Thank you. Thanks, Mr. Carlson. Okay, next we have our student ambassador reports. Hello everyone, my name is Javier Sevilla. It is a pleasure to be back in after a long wrestling season to update you about what is happening at Naperville Central. So a few past events that have happened are this year's senior party on um, February 24th, which was a success when we saw a large turnout of seniors. This past week we had our choir, band, and orchestra perform at their spring concerts, performing wonderful pieces with an upcoming of non-curricular choirs performing this week on the 21st at 7 p.m. with pop music as the focus. The senior class also picked up their cap and gowns last week, enjoying snacks in the field house. Also, DBC for track and field took place last week for men and women, and Naperville Central was a champion for both. A few current events happening is that students recently complained about our cafeteria only having one microwave and waiting forever to eat lunch, and so this problem has been alleviated with the addition of another microwave. <laughs> Students are now preparing for upcoming AP exams as they finish their main coursework for the AP classes. So a lot of stress is going to be going around Naperville Central upcomingly. Um, spring sports have started and competitions in warm weather are what we are looking forward to going outside for lacrosse and outside track and field. Uh, more seniors and juniors are enjoying their ability to leave campus during the nice weather and eat lunch outside. Also PE classes are taking advantage of the good weather and having an active day outside really improves the stu students' mood. FAFSA changes 
have also caused a really large impact on the senior class this year. And while college decisions are still being made, seniors are still under a lot of stress now with FAFSA being different than the years past. Future events are Central's Got Talent at the end of this week on the 22nd, where many students hope to entertain and demonstrate the unique talents for spring break. Thank you. Hi, my name is Kimberly Ibarra. I am Naperville North a student ambassador. Uh, I'll start with a little introduction since this is my first meeting. I am a senior, and some of my favorite courses right now are AP Psychology and AP Stats. Um, some activities I do inside and outside of school, I'm the president of our Latin American Student Association, um, and I work part-time outside of school, and I plan to attend UIUC in the fall. And I was interested in serving this role to amplify my voice and others' voices as well. And I hope I learn from this experience um, how to better represent a large group of people, and it'll help me in my future um, career. And I'll move on to more of the Aprilville North-centered events. Um, for our athletics, our summer camp registration is now open, and our spring sports are now beginning, like boys baseball, boys gymnastics, girls badminton, and girls lacrosse. We all recently started. The girls lacrosse team has a game tonight versus Lockport. Boys tennis, girls soccer, and girls softball is now underway. For our arts, we have our vocal music spring concert, um, March 19th, our orchestra concert, March 21st, and our multicultural show, March 22nd. Um, general activities that have happened, our spring assembly happened last Friday to celebrate air band winners and to showcase the people who raise money for St. Baldrick's. Um, Dress Up 203 was held at uh, Naperville North on Saturday to help uh, both high schools. Um, and provided everyone a unique experience for students um, who were invited to find a prom or other formal dress for school events. Our robotics showcase um, is at 4 and 6 p.m. In, on March 20th in the small calf, and our senior celebration is March or April 6th. School-wide events are um, COD takeover in the Learning Commons on March 6th, included many advisors and staff from enrollment, course areas, financial assistant, and bilingual services to help support students. They were at North for four hours and for five hours and interacted with over 700 students. And parent-teacher conferences were well attended and Naperville North allowed for 10 minutes, which aligns with uh, Naperville Central's uh, processes for conferences. Thank you. Thank you for those reports. We have reached uh, the point in our agenda for public comment. There is one, uh, there is public comment loaded um, for the board to, uh, in board doc, sorry. Um, we welcome comments from the public at its meetings. Citizens who wish to address the Board of Education should identify themselves by name. Comments by individuals shall be limited to three minutes. If the individual is representing multiple individuals or a group, they shall be allowed to speak for five minutes. I do not have any slips. Is there anyone who wishes to address the Board of Ed? Yes. Hi. I think I left a slip out there. Maybe it didn't take the page. May I? Yes. By myself, no group. Uh, my name is William Borden, a resident of Naperville, uh, District 203. We have two young people in our household, a uh, Red Hawk and a Maple Brook Wildcat. Yeah. April 22nd marks the anniversary of Earth Day, 54th anniversary of Earth Day. So I think it's time to recognize District 203 for your decisions to invest in cleaner transportation and also to improve air quality and to improve the food choices for students among other initiatives. Those are very good things. We know that idling vehicles, vehicles that stand there and have their engines running, they produce elevated levels of benzene, acetaldehyde, formaldehyde, other air toxics. We know this during the afternoon hour coinciding with parents picking up their kids from school. And nearly every day I walk to an elementary school and if you've done the same thing, you know there are long lines of cars waiting outside the school, many of them idling their engines for maybe five or 10 or 15 minutes, right? We don't see these pollutants, our kids don't see them. But we know this, that as their lungs develop, the chemicals can pose increased risk of asthma and respiratory diseases and other adverse health effects. And it's not just kids, 
the parent volunteers and the student staff have to be there and they inhale these fumes as well. So um, there's a good side to this. That's one reason District 203 chose last year to invest in electric buses, which is a great, great decision. Now, limiting a vehicle's idling time can dramatically reduce these pollutants and our exposure to them. So today, I'd like to encourage a volunteer pilot program <coughs> to reduce vehicle emissions at the end of the school day. The US EPA, the Environmental Protection Agency, uh, which was established in the wake of Earth Day in 1970, for those of us who were actually around then, and they actually have a, uh, a pilot policy, and I can show that to you. That's this. And I'd like to propose that we take a look at this, not that we adopt it to the letter, but perhaps in the spirit as a pilot project here at 203. About down to the bottom, they even actually recommended a little slogan, turn your key, be idle free. We could probably do better than that, but it's an interesting and perhaps useful policy nonetheless. We can use it as a guide. So with that, I'm very happy to help spearhead Time. such an initiative if we decide to move forward. Thank you for your comments. Is there anyone else who would like to address the board? As a reminder, because of questions raised in public comment, uh, address district operational matters. The board has designated our superintendent as the spokesperson for the district as our designee to respond to public comment and he will apprise the board of ed accordingly. This will conclude public comment tonight. Item six, the monthly reports. Uh, the monthly reports have been loaded uh, for your review. Item seven, action by consent. Melissa? I have the mic. Okay, which one's? 35789. Okay. Okay, I, so I had uh, bills and claims. I reviewed bills and claims this month, and I appreciate uh, Michelle Swope's time helping me get through the material. So with that, I will move to approve warrant number 1058161 through warrant number nine zero 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 six eight totaling twenty five million six hundred ninety nine thousand two hundred eighty five dollars and sixty cents for the period of february twenty first twenty twenty four to march eighteenth twenty twenty four along with items seven point oh two seven point oh four seven oh four okay so, so not 704. S item 7.06 and 7.10 and 7, sorry, 7.11 and 7.12. Second. A motion and a second have been heard. Please <coughs> call the roll, Mrs. Patton. Gerke. Aye. Kosminski? Aye. McMillan? Aye. Wanke? Aye. Kelly Black? Aye. Fitzgerald? Aye. Cush? Aye. The motion passes. If I can, before we go on to uh, questions regarding some items, uh, with the board's action regard regarding item 7.02, the adoption of personnel report, I'd like to introduce to uh, the community Seema Thurman. Seema, would you please stand? Okay, Seema was just approved by the Board of Education as the next principal at Mill Street Elementary School. Congratulations, Seema. So uh, Seema has a bachelor's uh, in science uh, in early childhood education from Southern Illinois University in Carbondale and a master's degree in educational leadership and administration from Concordia University. Uh, she has experience in both Michigan and Illinois as a principal since 2017, and we are thrilled to welcome her to the Naperville 203 family and specifically to Mill Street Elementary School. Seema, welcome. Thank you so much. 
Thank you so much. I'm so excited and honored to be appointed as the new principal of Mill Street School. I'm really looking forward to getting to know the staff and the families and the students. I'm really excited about that in the next coming months. So thank you so much for welcoming me. I'm so excited to be a part of the team. Okay, so item 7.03. Uh, the board meeting minutes from February 20th. I'll take, or I'll, I'm sorry, I move to approve item 7.03. I was just going to oh. explain. Sorry, I'm just going to explain why I pulled it so oh, okay. I know that people don't know. I'm going to abstain because I was absent, so obviously okay. I can't verify them. So that's just. Okay. Um, so I need a second. S second. Okay, Joe. Um, motion a second. Please call the roll, Mrs. Patton. Kelly Black. Abstain. Kush. Aye. Fitzgerald. Aye. McMillan. Aye. Kosminski. Aye. Wanke. Aye. Gerke. Aye. The motion passes. Item, um, I make a motion to approve item 7.04, the board meeting minutes from March 4th. Second. A motion and a second. Please call the roll, Mrs. Patton. Fitzgerald. Aye. Wanke. Aye. Kelly Black. Aye. Kosminski. Abstain. Um, McMillan? Aye. Gerke? Aye. Cush? Aye. The motion passes. Item 7.05, the closed session minutes, February 20th. I make a motion to approve the closed session minutes from February 20th. Second. Motion and second. Please call the roll, Mrs. Patton. Kelly Black? Abstain. Wanke? Aye. Gerke? Aye. Cush? Aye. McMillan? Aye. Kosminski? Aye. Fitzgerald? Aye. The motion passes. Item 7.07, .07, the certified employees recommended for reemployment and dismissal, full-time, part-time, and temporary and permanent substitutes. Okay, this is an annual process uh, that, that April 203 uh, reviews and brings to the Board of Education for action and consideration regarding uh, reemployment uh, and dismissal of some of our full-time, part-time, temporary, and permanent um, substitutes. I'd ask Mr. Ross, our Chief Human Resources Officer, just a very brief uh, high-level overview of uh, the rationale for this agenda item. Certainly. Many of our teachers have acquired what's referred to as tenure. A portion of our teachers are non-tenured, and there are certain requirements by law we need to uh, recommend to the board to either renew or non-renew non-tenured teachers. And um, There's a recommendation attached to this board item to do exactly that, to renew and to not renew certain teachers that are listed there. We recommend that the board take that action. Are there any questions from the board? Yes. Um, Melissa. I had a question. I know that obviously this is personnel, so I don't think they get the records that we get. But um, uh, I just wondered if there's a way that when we receive this, because one of the things that we've talked about before is that we have staffing, retaining and maintaining staffing. So, you, so one of the things I that would be helpful as a board employee to not just have like a name, but actually there's a several reasons. So we understand the fuller picture might be to explain a little about, we just get a list of names. It would be nice to know what's going on. And because we're voting on it, so, you know, why is this particular individual? Uh, administration can certainly review the process and make any rec uh, changes or recommendations to the process for the board in future years, for sure. Thank you. Hmm? Any other questions from the board? Okay, I will make a motion to approve item 7.07 .07 as presented. Second. A motion and a second have been heard. Please call the roll, Mrs. Patton. Kelly Black? Aye. Wanke? Aye. Gerke? Aye. Cush? Aye. McMillan? Aye. Kosminski? Aye. Fitzgerald? Aye. The motion passes. Item 7.08. Educational support personnel recommended for dismissal, timesheet, instructive and instructional assistance, and temporary positions. Somewhat similarly to uh, agenda item 7.07, .07, our annual process requires that we review educational support personnel positions um, and make recommendations to the Board of Education um, for its action and consideration. We do this every March. Uh, Mr. Ross, any additional information that you would provide for background? Yeah, I would just point out that these are positions attached to this board agenda item. Um, 
that are considered temporary positions, we don't know whether or not these positions will be needed for next year. We do have some open positions that are open right now, and we do anticipate being open. And so um, many of the people on this list may well qualify for those jobs. They may or may not be interested in those jobs, but they may qualify for those jobs. But right now, we don't know that these positions will be available, and therefore we're recommending to the board that at the end of this school year, we dismiss these employees. Um, perhaps many of them will be interested in applying for the positions that are open. Any questions from the board? Melissa? I just wanted to comment because I was public about my concerns on some of these topics. Um, we, we were able, because they fall under employment, to kind of discuss and get more information in closed doors. So I want people to also know that. Um, I, I re recommended that it is, I want to, my concern is if I don't flag these items, they just, I, I don't get much information and I just vote on them. So I, I have publicly stated, so I want to restate it and take ownership of my statements of that when we have these explanations, it's very helpful to me as a board member to know exactly what's going on because I do hear from the community and from staff, you know, concerns about staffing issues and having enough people. So it's very difficult if I don't quite understand this process or what's going on. For me, part of my role as a board member is to talk to the community and be able to understand this. And then when I, I definitely like to make informed decisions um, when this happens. For example, I know that I was able to talk to Bob Ross and he was able to explain. I said, why in the world would we be dismissing support staff when we're bending over backwards trying to find these people. And he explained that it's because a particular position might not be. So I did make a recommendation or a request that when something like this comes up, that we do have a chance as a board member that I get the additional information to kind of understand what's going on. Um, so that it doesn't just go to a consent agenda. I also thought it might be helpful to the public to know like that clarification makes sense to me where when it's just on a consent agenda and what's provided with that to myself and the public um, can be confusing. And it can also, yeah, yeah, I didn't know why we would be dismissing people. So if you say it's position. Another thing I thought we might want to clarify too with people is um, I had asked as a board member to get, if these people, if it's a position, but they, have the skills to do the job we want, and we're dismissing them because that position might not be helpful. Um, Mr. Ross was explaining that, um, you know, there might be issues like, I don't want to work at this school. I only want to work at this school. It would be nice as a board member if I found, I knew the rationale so it gives me a better picture of the entire, you know, like, okay, it gives me more information about what's going on that these people don't want to move to another position. Uh, helps me make better decisions in the future. And then also maybe we be very, that if it's written in there that we are offering these people jobs, that also helps. Again, it clarifies the picture because before this I was like scratching my head like we're getting rid of assistance when we need them. So I just wanted to clarify that whole situation. And then, yeah, so that's it. So thank you. Thanks for your comments. Any other questions from the board? Okay, I will make a motion to approve item 7.08 as presented. So moved. Motion and second. Please call the roll, Mrs. Patton. Fitzgerald? Aye. Kelly Black? Aye. Wanke? Aye. Gerke? Aye. McMillan? Aye. Kosminski? Aye. Cush? Aye. The motion passes. Item 7.09, the administrator contract renewal. Uh, all administrators uh, with the all administrators in our district, with the exception of the superintendent, are on one-year, single-year contracts. The board must take action to renew uh, contracts for the next school year. Um, this agenda item recommends contracts, administrative positions for the coming school year. Any questions from the board? <clears throat> okay. Oh, Melissa. Um, I pulled this item. Again, this goes along with, I received the information, I believe, on Saturday with the contracts and the names. Um, one of the things, um, 
we don't talk about any of this. Like we get survey information, like the essential five that tells us the opinion from the staff and the students with leadership. And then we take other surveys, but we don't ever discuss this. So if I'm voting on administrators, we don't even discuss, you know, some of them, I look through the essential five, some of them there's area that you know, there's concerns about leadership. Some of them, they're doing great. But I do find it shocking as a board member that I just vote on a list of names, I get a contract, you know, over the weekend, where I would like to have conversations because the, the, our administrators and principals and people in charge of our buildings have a huge effect on, you know, the running of our schools and the quality of education that our kids get. So it would be nice to go over the information that our staff and community and students take the time to provide us about how they feel about this and that I want to make informed decisions. So I will probably just in all honesty vote nay on this because I don't in good conscience have enough information. Charles. Can I ask a question? So this is recommending the renewal of all of our administrators. Mm -hmm. or, or, the, or the administrators yeah. that, that, mm -hmm. that the staff has deemed as Correct. the right things to do, and so you're asking us, so. Yeah. And from my understanding, your, your team is much closer to all of this than any of us That's are, correct. and so this is a recommendation that you're making mm -hmm. based on the thoughtful consideration of all the things and all the requirements in the district. That's correct. Okay, just, yeah. Donna. I just wanna add one thing, is that we employ the superintendent, and that's the only contract that we, um, go through and complete detail and evaluate. And then all of these people, Dan, are evaluated either by you, if they're cabinet, or, or, or by the cabinet, if they're uh, building level, is or that correct? designated administrator. Thank you. Other, go ahead. Oh, I didn't have anything. I, oh. I, I appreciate the staff's work too. Um, and, and I know the thorough and thoughtful process that we go through when we, um, when we extend the contracts to our administrators, and we highly value them. So we're so appreciative of their service. Um, I'm I, I would just, um, I'd, I, I have to echo what Kristen said here, is that we know, um, we know you're doing a good job. You know, that's evident in, in, in every aspect of the role that I, the role that I have and what I see, I know that you are all doing a good job. And I know Dan, you are very thoughtful in, in how you approach your cabinet and staff at all levels. So I appreciate all of that, that all of the work that goes into making sure um, we have the best people working with us. And I'm convinced that we are, we do have the best people working with us. Melissa. Well, I would assume this is under my realm of responsibility since I'm voting on it. So that, I, I question that, and I'm not implying that these people are not doing their jobs. I'm saying that my job is to oversee, trust but verify. The administration makes recommendations, but part of my job is that's great, but I do wanna see the information that supports that, especially if we are asking, we are paying companies to do surveys, a lot of money, and we, people are taking their time to fill this out, our staff and our, you know, the stakeholders in the community and, you know, the students, I want to hear their voice. So it's not even just that I don't trust this or I wouldn't renew these contracts. It's a point that why aren't we having conversations? Why aren't we looking at that information? And and I want to look at that and be informed if I make decisions. As a reminder, you can always vote yes, no, or abstain. But thank you for your comments. Oh, Charles. Sorry, one last thing. So again, this is a recommendation that is coming forward. And so voting yes on this means that I'm agreeing that to renew the contracts of the individuals you're recommending being contracted, right? And if I were to say no, that means I'm not agreeing to renew these contracts, correct? Okay, so no means not agreeing to continue. Yes means agreeing to continue, right? Okay, thank you. Oh, wait, so I with that, I'd like to make approval or a motion to approve item 
7.09 administrator contract renewal as presented. Second. A motion and a second have been heard. Please call the roll, Mrs. Patton. Cush? Aye. Kelly Black? Nay. Fitzgerald? Aye. Wanke? Aye. Kosminski? Aye. McMillan? Aye. Gerke? Aye. The motion passes. Item 8, personnel. I will make a, a motion to approve item 8.01, a resolution authorizing issuance of notice of charges and dismissal and hearing rights to Umberto Gonzalez. Second. A motion and a second have been heard. Please call the roll, Mrs. Patton. Fitzgerald? Aye. Kosminski? Aye. Gerke? Aye. Kelly Black? Aye. Cush? Aye. McMillan? Aye. Wanke? Aye. The motion passes. Item 9, communications. 9.01, written communications have been loaded for review. Item 9.02, the superintendent's report. No, okay. Item 9.03, the president's report. Just a brief um, thank you, I suppose. Um, it was a pleasure to enjoy dinner with some of, um, some of my colleagues and with Superintendent Bridges last week, uh, the DuPage Division dinner, and it was a nice surprise when the guest speaker uh, showcased our SEL work with a video um, that she showed everybody in attendance. So um, it's always a nice time, um, it's a, a good time um, with my board colleagues in a more, little bit more social setting. Item 9.04, Board of Education reports. Uh, Amanda, go ahead. Thank you so much. Um, I just wanted to report out on the NEF board. Um, uh, we attended, Donna and I attended this past week, um, <clears throat> and there's a lot of exciting things coming up. Most importantly, most uh, or uh, coming up the fastest, I'm sorry, my brain is not working today with words, um, is the Building a Passion Breakfast, which is April 16th from 7 a.m. to 9 a.m. at Embassy Suites. And um, I'm really excited. Not only is it this a, a an amazing event where we really get to see the impact of NEF on our students here in Naperville and all the innovative projects that are brought to NEF and voted on by students, by teachers in the district, um, but uh, also it's just really uh, inspiring um, because they have a guest speaker, I, I might butcher the last name, um, Carrie Casarati, who is a Naperville North alumni, and when she was in school, she was part of the Huskies Robotics Program, and is now has a PhD in physics from Harvard, is one of uh, 24, 2024's Forbes 40 Under 40, and she's going to be a, a guest speaker there, so we're very excited about that. Um, I also wanted to, uh, the next event that's coming up is the Incubator uh, Pitch Night, which is going to be May 9th. That's always fun. Um, that's uh, at the Embassy Suites, and that's a really great event uh, to go and hear different types of uh, business pitches from our uh, own students. And then, uh, last but not least, it's already time to start thinking about the uh, Team NEF um, uh, 5K, 10K, and Half Marathon. It's going to be Sunday, October 20th this year, change of uh, time from the typical. Um, but it, um, they're continuing to do where you have your uh, two or three fundraising commitment and then any other family member above and beyond that is only $30 per family member, which is great. It's a really fun thing. I know that a couple years ago I saw Joe and his whole family running, um, so and I know many of you guys participate, um, but it's, it's just a fun uh, family event. So I just wanted to bring up some of those great things and hope you can support. Thanks for your report, Amanda. Any other board reports? Okay. Oh, Melissa, sorry. <laughs> Thank you. 
Thanks for your report, Melissa. Any other reports? Okay. Item 10, discussion without action. We do not have any items without action. Item 11, discussion with action. Um, just as a reminder to all board members, I will recognize each individual for their questions or comments. As per our board agreements, we share time with each, with each with other members. And after each person has had a turn, we'll go back around if necessary. Item 11.01, .01, the Career 203 update. Yeah, at the March 4th Board of Education meeting, Shelley Nelson, Director of Career 203, for April 203, presented recommendations on behalf of the Career 203 Committee uh, for updates to the Career 203 um, offerings in, in April 203. Uh, I have no additional questions or information. Shelley is here. If there are no questions, I recommend you approve um, the recommendations of the committee as presented. Questions from the board? I just wanted to make one comment. Um, I sent a question ahead. It was a curiosity question, and you had said something at the last meeting about, and I'm going to paraphrase, uh, about educators getting their first master's degree, which made me wonder how many of our educators have more than one advanced degree. And so uh, Superintendent Bridges got back to me with some information, and I don't remember the numbers exactly, but I think it needs to be pointed out how many have multiple degrees multiple advanced degrees, and then how many have PhDs. Um, that is a total celebration and a sign of the commitment that our educators have to their own education and how that will better serve our students. Yeah. Any other questions or comments? All right. I move to approve item 11.01, .01, Career 203 update as presented. Second. A motion and second been heard. Please call the roll, Mrs. Patton. Fitzgerald. Aye. Kosminski? Aye. Gerke? Aye. Kelly Black? Aye. Cush? Aye. McMillan? Aye. Wanke? Aye. The motion passes. Item 11.02, the debt service levy. Okay, uh, it, um, in the March 4th Board of Education meeting, administration presented a recommendation in consultation with uh, input from the Citizen Finance Advisor Committee uh, to abate the 2023 debt service levy. Uh, that abatement had been accounted for in uh, forecasting scenarios that the Board of Education has seen. I believe we presented that in February. I recommend you fully abate the 2023 debt service levy as presented. Mr. Francis, any additional information? If you have any questions, recommend you approve as presented. Questions from the Board? Okay. I'll take a motion for item 11.02. I move approval of item 11.02 uh, as presented. Second. A motion and a second have been heard. Please call the roll, Mrs. Patton. Monkey? Aye. McMillan? Aye. Fitzgerald? Aye. Kosminski? Aye. Gerke? Aye. Cush? Aye. Kelly Black? Aye. The motion passes. Item 11.03, resolution for the transfer of funds for debt abatement. Having now approved the recommendation of a debt service levy, Board of Education now uh, must uh, approve a resolution authorizing uh, such action. So the administration recommends the approval of the resolution posted in board docs, which approves the transferring of monies from the Education Fund to the Debt Service Fund uh, to provide funding in lieu of the 2023 debt service taxation. Any questions? I move to approve item 11.03, the resolution to transfer the funds for the debt abatement. Second. A motion and a second have been heard. Please call the roll, Mrs. Patton. Cush? Aye. McMillan? Aye. Kelly Black? Aye. Fitzgerald? Aye. Kosminski? Aye. Gerke? Aye. Wanke? Aye. The motion passes. Item 11.04, BC through 12 certified staffing and district special ed projection. The March 4th Board of Education meeting administration provided a recommendation to the Board of Education uh, regarding its staffing projection uh, expected for the 2024-2025 school year. I recommend you approve this as presented. Questions from the board? Melissa? I just want to um, clarify, because I know we discussed this last board meeting, is that these uh, staffing recommendations are based on enrollment numbers and and not they don't address any areas we might increase because of needs or areas that we're not doing as strong as that this is enrollment. So okay. The, the staffing projection is in relation to uh, projected enrollment as well as enrollment into specialized programming. Any new staffing um, as a result of other needs would come through our budget process. Okay, thank you. 
Other questions? Okay. I'll take a motion for item 11.04. So moved. Second. A motion and second have been heard. Please call the roll, Mrs. Patton. Kosminski. Aye. Cush. Aye. Wanke. Aye. McMillan. Aye. Fitzgerald. Aye. Kelly Black. Aye. Gerke. Aye. The motion passes. Item 11.05, the sustainability update and approval of advisor. Great. So as a part of the Focus uh, 203 Strategic Blueprint, uh, one of our commitments, uh, item 3.01, is to identify and create a long-term plan to reduce the district's carbon footprint. Uh, along with that, the district had sought uh, requests for qualifications um, for uh, consultants, advisors to support us in uh, making those decisions. Uh, recently, our Director of Buildings and Grounds, Melanie Brown, uh, provided a presentation to NEST, uh, which is the Naperville Environmental Sustainability Task Force, uh, and uh, members of the Board of Education uh, had been invited and requested that uh, you know, maybe Melanie come to a board meeting to provide a brief overview, similar to what she provided to NEST, so she's here to do that, and we thought it was appropriate to combine uh, her update along with our recommendation uh, regarding uh, the Carbon Action Plan and Greenhouse Gas Accounting Services request for qualification. So, Melanie, I'll let you go ahead with your update. Good evening, and thank you for allowing me some time to share an update and an action item related to Strategic Blueprint Focus 3.1. This presentation, as Mr. Bridges said, may seem familiar to some of you. The district was invited by Nest to share similar information last month along with our neighbors at Indian Prairie 204. Tonight, uh, there are some updates to share from that presentation. The district has been active in identifying and implementing ways to create more sustainable school environments. This listing provides some of the ways that we've been working towards this goal. I do want to thank my predecessor, Pat Dolan, for compiling this list and beginning this work. Um, so uh, for HVAC equipment replacement, um, with every replacement, we're purchasing high-efficiency boilers, air conditioning, and cooling equipment with every upgrade. We require our architectural and engineering consultants to spec out equipment and systems that exceed state and federal standards. When we are replacing windows, we're removing old single-pane glass windows and installing high-efficiency operable windows to allow for better thermal performance, access to fresh air, and solar heating control. This has included doors and entry systems at some of our schools as well. Several smaller schools have had replacements in the past six years. Any new entrances or construction has glazing that exceeds federal energy code requirements. All of our new roofing projects comply with, or in most cases exceed, federal energy code minimums. All new roofing is white or very light colored membranes to improve solar reflectivity extend service life, and reduce solar-derived heat buildup under the roof deck. Tom Malamos, our indoor air quality manager, performs two to three intensive air quality reviews in each school each year. These reports are provided to the building principal and kept for records. If there are any follow-up steps that need to take place, he shares them with the building staff and provides continued support. Additional investigations of organic growth, order, odors, or smells, and high concentrations of carbon dioxide are performed as situations call for throughout the year. Our flooring contractors use low or no VOC admitting adhesives, as well as our internal painting crews and commercial painters. For our cleaning products, we use metered dispensers of low emitting chemicals to prevent overconcentration of our cleaning agents or improper mixing. Most of our cleaning chemicals are certified low emitting by Green Seal, which is a nonprofit group encouraging the use of non toxic bio based cleaning. Our maintenance team has replaced our exterior parking lot lights with LED and has begun the process to replace interior lights throughout the district. Um, we do have bio based and post consumer disposables as our uh, rolled and sea fold paper towels. Um, standard rolled toilet paper, facial tissues, and our food service disposables are required to be recyclable or compostable. As you know, we've purchased four EV driver ed cars at the two high schools. We did that in the summer of 2022, and four EV buses for transportation this budget year. We just received word this evening that two of the three chargers have been commissioned and are ready to be put in service. That means the buses should be ready to roll in the very near future. In an 
an effort to avoid overproduction, our elementary school students pre-order their lunches. This helps the food service kitchen reduce food waste. Now we have these nine things, and there's a lot going on there, but this is not an exhaustive list, but it certainly highlights that the work has already started in Naperville 203. And that brings us to tonight's update and agenda item. As a reminder, our Focus 203 Strategic Blueprint Item 3.1 is to identify and create a long-term plan to reduce the district's carbon footprint. To guide us in achieving this commitment, we solicited a request for qualifications for Carbon Action Plan and Greenhouse Gas Accounting Services. We had nine companies respond with proposals and we interviewed four finalists in February. We are excited to recommend Caramita to be our partner in this project we felt that Karamita's experience, vision for our project, and our assigned team are in full alignment with what we're looking for in a vendor partner for this project. Karamita's work will be conducted in two parts. The first will be gathering historical data to develop and identify a baseline greenhouse gas inventory. This stage will take approximately six to eight weeks from the time all the required data is received from us. Once all of the data has been collected and analyzed, the next step will entail developing a carbon action plan. The goal is to create a plan that will have realistic, achievable, and implementable strategies to achieve carbon footprint reduction goals. This step is slated for approximately eight to 10 weeks after the inventories are completed. As we move through the steps of this project, there will be opportunities for updates and stakeholder engagement. If this agenda item is approved this evening, we will start working with Karamita right away on laying out the plan and schedule for this project. Thank you again for your time this evening, and I appreciate your consideration of this agenda item. Thanks for your presentation, Melanie. Any questions from the board, Joe? <laughs> Yeah, uh, first I want to thank you for all of your work uh, on, this, on this initiative, uh, really laying out uh, the work that the district has already been doing. Um, yeah, it is great to see kind of that one slide snapshot of, uh, of what's been going on. You know, we've, we've talked about it a little bit in the past, um, but this is the, the first time it's kind of been laid out in, in a single presentation. So I, I really uh, appreciate uh, your work on that. Uh, and also on um, uh, contracting uh, for this uh, carbon audit uh, for the district. Um, great way to set a baseline so that we can measure, uh, you know, our, our uh, greenhouse gas uh, reductions uh, against that, that baseline. Um, one thing that I, I, um, I saw was that they're looking to uh, provide uh, medium-term and long-term uh, carbon reduction plans. Um, and the uh, target dates they, they put are 2035 and 2050. Um, and the 2035 uh, aligns nicely with uh, when the city, uh, city's contract with uh, IMEA is supposed to cease. Um, and I don't know if that was uh, on purpose or, or uh, <laughs> yeah, accidental. Um, but the um, IMEA is trying to get this uh, contract extension uh, you know, for another five or 10 years now. Um, and I'm wondering if uh, the district is talking to the city or, or if uh, Karamita um, uh, will be talking to the city ab um, about uh, uh, yeah, speaking against, advocating against um, this uh, uh, contract extension. Um, you know, right now, 80% uh, of our uh, electricity in Naperville is uh, coal-fired. And if we can, you know, cut that, um, that really uh, kind of reduces uh, our greenhouse gas uh, emissions uh, very rapidly. So at this time, and regarding the agreement with uh, IMEA, no, we have not taken a position or communicated anything to the city. Uh, I think it'd be important for us to have our consultants on board to get a full understanding of um, just the impact that that may have. So we'll keep you posted. Donna. So this is something that we've talked about for years, and so I'm super thrilled that we we have made the progress that we have. And I'm going to echo everything that my colleague said, and then I'm going to add um, that we also need to be uh, very much in touch with IMEA. And I I've heard both ways, whether or not there's regulations on solar, because I'd love to see us uh, powering those buses with solar, not with coal. And so. But right now, I believe they're, they're, it's come back twice in different formats um, from the state and the state level, whether or not um, 
there's regulations on if we can actually use solar to to go beyond IMEA's contract. So when we talk to them, I, it's more of a, a a request looking forward when we when we make that decision when you're working with the consultant. Um, I, I hope that we're looking at our potential for solar and the limitations that we may be put under due to the city. Uh, it's a it's a huge concern of Nest and and our community members so much so that there's legislation there to try to help understand the transparency. So I would hope that we get some transparency from the district or from the city on this as well. Kristen. Um, so I just wanted to also highlight, um, echo as well, how, how excited we are about this. And it's wonderful to have this presentation all with all of it all outlined. I just want to recognize as well that we've had many students who've advocated to us in this regard. and. Um, I, I think that that's something where they've taken a lot of leadership, and I know in your presentation there were some student leaders that, that were a part of the group that, for NEST um, as well. Um, I'm excited about the fact that the um, contract includes um, the, the specifications that we will be providing educational activities going forward for students, um, looking at those AP environmental science classes, the student sustainability groups, and other sustainability-related groups to really work with our students and continue that um, partnership that we've had with our students in terms of their advocacy and their interest in this area. So thank you for making sure that this contract included parts of that. I also think that it's great that um, in terms of looking at the strategy, um, we're, we're continuing to um, work towards our car maximizing our carbon reduction while minimizing our financial burdens. And so thank you for incorporating that all into the structure there so that we're able to get the biggest bang for our buck. We're, we're, we're continuing to look for federal funds and state funds and whatever funds are available to help augment um, our, our resources. But I, I just I appreciate that all being a part of that contract. So thank you. I'd like to add to the way we continually maintain our buildings i think you know we haven't let anything go to the point where we have to do a big expense and we've done those little incremental things like when there's better windows we put in better windows when there you know when when there's something new and better we've taken advantage of that and that continuous cycle that we have of improving our buildings i think even before we had this very specific blueprint initiative we've been tr we've been working towards it now it feels like it's Kind of getting to this I don't know maybe the next level you know with going with an advisor so we can continue doing this um, I, I just appreciate that constant cycle of improvement we just don't let anything fall by the wayside until it's beyond um, help or repair and then we're in a, in a worse position other questions Melissa uh, thank you for your presentation tonight and your NEST presentation. I was lucky enough to do both. I also appreciate that you know NEST and the school districts got together to do that presentation and make it available to the public so that they understood. So there's this transparency. You can uh, ask questions. I, I appreciate it. Um, and I also appreciate greatly that when we do these innovative things that we do incorporate our students in the process because it gives them the, that experience and opportunity to to grow and use the skills they're going to use later in life um, i have a couple of questions that i get a lot so i thought i'll ask the experts um, one of the questions i get a lot is is there a time frame on the school buses i know there was an update tonight but do we have a time frame of when they'll be in use uh, I think uh, she said I think for uh, we have a couple that will be uh, shortly after spring break okay. um, we um, and then um, we are looking at a uh, mr. Francis and I have spoken about timeline for purchase of our next round of buses we'll update the Board of Education on that soon okay my next question um, another thing I get because we do have a community that likes to get very involved and they do care about envi environmental issues so um, a lot of community members uh, want to contribute and participate. I know that the, um, I'm not quite sure, like with the buses or with each one of these little groups, do we, how do we engage with the community? How do they have opportunities to participate? I, again, we'll be looking for any input from the advisor pending the board's action this evening. Um, and um, awareness really is driven through. Um, the board meetings and then communication that will come as a result of board action. 
Um, this is a something, uh, a, a, a commitment within our strategic plan that we focused on moving forward uh, with, and this is our time to really begin this work, and we'll begin the communication on a greater level um, as we move forward. Okay, and I also want to thank, there's been community members that are very involved and maybe other programs in the city or and in the county about, I know that they've let us know about grants and funding information because um, they definitely want us to take advantage of those opportunities. So thank you for those community members for sharing. Thank you. Any other questions? Okay. I will take a motion for 11.05. Uh, move approval of item 11.05, sustainability update and approval of advisor. Second. A motion and a second have been heard. Please call the roll, Mrs. Penn. Wanke. Aye. Gerke. Aye. Fitzgerald. Aye. McMillan. Aye. Cush. Aye. Kosminski. Aye. Kelly Black. Aye. The motion passes. Item 11.06, the consideration of Board of Education expenses. Uh, in accordance with the Illinois School Code, Board of Education Policy 2, colon 125, requires all board member expenses for travel, meals, and or lodging appro be approved by a roll call vote at an open meeting of the Board of Education. We have a number of expenses in there from uh, events such as the Cosmo Conference, uh, DuPage, uh, IASB Division dinner meeting, uh, as well as professional learning. We recommend you approve as presented. Questions from the board? I will take a motion for item 11.06. So moved. Second. A motion and a second have been heard. Please call the roll, Mrs. Patton. McMillan. Aye. Fitzgerald. Aye. Wanke. Aye. Gerke. Aye. Cush. Aye. Kosminski. Aye. Kelly Black. Aye. Motion passes. Item 12, old business. We do not have any old business. Item 13, new business. We do not have any new business. Item 14, upcoming events, the schedule of events. Okay, next week uh, is spring vacation, the 25th through the 29th. The next Board of Education meeting will be right back here on April 1st. Reminder, uh, as was communicated via Talk203, uh, due to the number of our school facilities that are being used as polling places tomorrow, it'll be an e-learning day. Item 15, adjournment, motion to adjourn. I move we adjourn. <laughs> second. A motion and a second have been heard. Please call the roll, Mrs. Patton. Gerke. Aye. Kosminski. Aye. McMillan. Aye. Wanke. Aye. Kelly Black. Aye. Fitzgerald. Aye. Cush. Aye. The motion passes. Enjoy spring break, everyone. Good night. <laughs>